Hi, welcome to our class on arrays. Um, arrays are a really interesting thing that uh, it's a data structure in, uh, in programming. And really, again, just like most things in programming, we're trying to uh, create something that we see in the world around us. So if we look in the world around us, um, we have all kinds of containers that hold things. So for example, if I look at this giant Nerf gun here, uh, there's a big container uh, that holds, uh, it's a clip, I guess you'd call it, uh, but it's a container that holds Nerf bullets. And the idea with this is that this can only really contain um, objects that are Nerf bullets. If you try to put other things inside of that container, it will not work well. Over here, uh, we have a, uh, an egg carton. Uh, an egg carton is really designed to hold eggs. It does it very well, um, but that's all it's really designed to hold. Uh, you see this poor egg actually took my midterm last week. He's not feeling good about it. Um, but this is what most students feel like by the end of the course, so it's okay. Uh, so with arrays, uh, we're trying to, again, build a container to hold things. And the types of things that we can hold could be anything, just like in the real world. So we have in this case, containers that hold Nerf bullets, eggs, container that holds a staple. This container holds uh, batteries. So arrays are great if we have some fixed number of objects that we want to hold. Every single one of these would be an example of something that has a fixed number of objects. I'm guessing this is about 50 bullets. This one holds four eggs. Uh, we've got four batteries in here, and this probably holds 100 staples. Um, it's easy to cycle through all of them, right? So if I gave each of these, for example, eggs a number, like zero, oops, zero, one, two, three, I could say, uh, give me egg one, and that would point me right back here to the, uh, <laughs> the squirrely-eyed egg. Um, so I'd be able to address each of those, each of those things. Um, it's a lot easier to re reference one thing, one variable, than, than multiple. So uh, you know, going back to this example, it's easier for me to say, hand me the egg carton, right? So I'd get all of these eggs at once versus uh, hand me egg number one, then hand me egg number two, then hand me egg three, right? Like it's a lot of, a lot of extra work to handle all those individual uh, uh, objects. Uh, imagine handling all of these bullets without something to hold them in. You'd have to have this big, uh, <laughs> you'd have to have very big hands to carry all these bullets. Um, so let's take a look at this. So in programming, we often represent uh, an array with, uh, uh, you know, boxes. So each box points to the data type. In this case, if, if I was simulating something that holds four different grades, then I would, uh, I would create my array, right? So here's the Java code. Uh, I declare my data type right here with the word int. And the only difference with this and other variables is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to put in these square brackets, which is telling the computer, I want to make an array here instead of just a regular integer. If it was just a regular integer, you know, it might hold just one number, like 89 or 78. In this case, I can hold all four of them together. And you can make arrays pretty much any size you want. So I could put 400 here or 10, right? Um, so let's take a look at that in practice. If I go into a Java program here, let's just make a font a little bigger for everyone to read. So I wrote this, uh, wrote this little program in advance. But the, the idea here is the same. So here's my data type. It's an integer. And I tell it that it's going to be an array. So it's an array of integer data types. And I'll do another video in a moment that will show us an array of student data types. And we can use all kinds of different objects inside of our arrays. but um, uh, to ensure that everyone understands it, I'm going to start with the simplest type of data that we have, which is really integers. So in here, my variable name is called class grades, right? So these are all the grades of the class. And uh, I'm going to initialize it, in this case, with 89, 78, 82, and 94, which happens to be the same as this picture here, okay? So I want you to visualize that there's, you know, uh, some kind of physical object that's holding these four numbers for us. And position 0 is going to be the first position. Then this one's in position 1, position 2, position 3. Just like at a movie theater, you'd have a particular seat number. Or if you went to an apartment building, you might have an apartment number. Arrays are the same. Um, it's just a container that can hold a bunch of things. 
and we number each one so we know how to access them. So in this case, if I have these four numbers, look how easy it is to actually uh, calculate things like an average. I can say system.out.print, the class average is, and I can call a method, instead of passing in four variables, or ten variables, or a hundred variables, I just pass in one. It's my container that holds uh, the grades. So if I go into if we go into our method here, the average, I start off, I say, well, total is equal to zero, okay? And I'm going to add up all these numbers and divide by four. And we've looked in the class at, um, at four loops. So in four loops, uh, you know, you start at zero or one or some starting point. So here, I'm going to define a variable called index equals zero, or <laughs> index, and I'm going to make it equal to zero to start because that's in our array, this is position 0, this is position 1. Yeah? So I'm basically going to loop over this array, starting at 0, up to the length of the array. Okay? And each time through, I'm going to increase my index by 1. So my total first time through is 0. So I say total is equal to whatever it was before, plus whatever's in position zero. So if I look here, position zero is 89. So the first time through this loop, it's going to say total is equal to zero plus 89, which equals 89. And then the index counter here is going to go up by one. So it's going to check, is one less than four? Well, that's true. So it's going to go into our loop, and it's going to say 89 plus equals, and it's going to say the number array at position one, which is going to be 78 in this case. So we're now at, uh, you know, if we bring up our calculator here, it's like saying 89 plus 78. So now we're at 167. And then it's going to increase our counter. We'll go up. It's going to check is 3 less than 4. Or sorry, is 2 less than 4. It is. So it'll keep going through. And it'll add up each of, each of the numbers in our array. And then at the end, what it does is it says return whatever that total was by the number of elements in your array. So in this case, it doesn't even care if we have four elements, ten elements, or hundred elements. It'll add them all up, and then it'll just divide it by the number of elements. And what I'm doing here is I'm casting it as a float type uh, so that I, could get some, uh, I can get some decimals back. So let's run this. So if I run it, it says the class average is 85.8. So uh, nice and easy to handle multiple sized things. And if, in fact, I added in a couple extra grades in here, I can run it again. And now I've got a new average, and I didn't have to change anything else. So it's very, very powerful concept being able to put things into containers. Uh, so that's a quick look at arrays. I hope.